Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Ruskies and Reads. So today I kind of have a fun little video for you. I want to do a read, rewrite, or burn edition of all of the romance books that I have read over, I would say, the past probably three to four years. So basically this is Fuck, Mary Kill bookish edition. And I thought that that would be interesting to do in February for romances. They are primarily all going to be adult romance or adult contemporaries that heavily feature romance. So I have a mug here full of all of my little papers. Yes, y'all, I have like a bunch of mugs full of all of these different scraps of paper for different reasons all over my bookcases. This one is specifically for this video so I'm gonna pull three each time and I'm gonna let you know which book I would reread, which book I would rewrite, and which book I would burn. So let's go ahead and jump in around one. Okay, so book number one is Rescue You by Alicia Whistler. Next, I have Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren and Trashy Romance Novel. Trashy Romance Novel is an indie published romance novel that was actually sent to me by the author back when I was really active on Bookstagram. She liked my Bookstagram and she sent me her own romance book, which was called Trashy Romance Novel. Okay, so right off the bat, I know that I would burn Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren. I didn't really enjoy that book very much at all. I had a lot of technical issues with it. I think I gave it like maybe a three stars and I remember almost nothing about it and I definitely definitely would not want to reread it and I don't care enough about it to rewrite it so that one is getting burned. I would reread for sure Rescue You by Alicia Whistler. This is a book that was sent to me when I was trying a bookish subscription service and I had never heard of this author before and this is a romance with older characters if I remember correctly both of the main love interests in this story are in their early 40s which I found very very refreshing and also on top of this this book is heavily centered around rescuing dogs so naturally I loved that aspect but overall I thought it was just a really well done romance and I hear absolutely nobody else talk about this story and there are now two other books out in this series and I just remember really enjoying myself with this one I definitely want to read the other two so that is probably one I wouldn't mind revisiting and so that would just naturally lead me to rewrite trashy romance novel what specifically I would rewrite about it I can't necessarily say because I don't remember all of the details about the story I think that's going to be a theme that you see a lot in this video when I say I'm going to rewrite something not necessarily that I have any Anything specific that I want to rewrite about it but just that it doesn't necessarily fall into one of the other two categories so like I was easily able to say that I wanted to burn dating you hating you and then I wanted to reread rescue you so naturally trashy romance novel would just be one that I would rewrite but I actually remember really enjoying that one as well like I said this is an indie published novel nobody else talks about it I think it only has like a handful of reviews on Goodreads so it's not like a very popular story but I thought it was pretty well written and I actually really enjoyed it so I don't think I would want to burn that one all right let's see what we got for around two Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, Regretting You by Colleen Hoover, Kiss Her Once for Me by Alison Cochran. Okay, so I have two five-star books in here, two books that I absolutely loved so, so much. So Kiss Her Once for Me is absolutely going to be the one that's burnt. That was like a three-star read. It didn't really do a whole lot for me and I could easily say goodbye to it. But Regretting You are Part of Your World. Okay, so those were two very, very different stories. And I would say that the romance in Regretting You was very much like a secondary part of that plot because it was more about a mother-daughter relationship. So I think I would say that I would absolutely reread Part of Your World. I recently read that and it was a phenomenal book. This is a spoiler for a vlog that's going to be coming out soon, but it was like absolutely perfection. It was like one of the most perfect romances that I've ever read in my entire life. And so that was an easy five stars for me. So I think that I would rewrite Regretting You. If I remember correctly, one of the only real complaints I had about Regretting You was just the actions of the teenager in that story, just because they got on my nerves. But that really doesn't have anything to do with the romance side of it. But if I had to pick one of the books to rewrite it would just be that one because I cannot burn it that's like one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books of all time I just loved it so much and so I think I would go with that one to rewrite all right round number three People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover and Book Lovers by Emily Henry <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is impossible because I loved all three of those books. All three of them. Reminders of Him was one of my favorite books of 2022. And Book Lovers also made that list. So I think if I had to pick one to burn, it would be The People We Meet on Vacation just because Book Lovers to me was better than that. Although I very much loved People We Meet on Vacation. That was the very first Emily Henry that I'd ever read. But out of these three, I think I would absolutely go ahead and burn The People We Meet on Vacation. I would reread Reminders of Him and I would rewrite Book Lovers even though that one was almost close to perfection. I loved that romance immensely. 
immensely. There were just a few tiny little issues that I had with it going throughout. So I would say that I would probably rewrite Book Lovers for sure. I definitely don't want to burn that one because I thought it was fantastic. Definitely Emily Henry's strongest. That was tough. Wow. Okay. I was hoping that at least there would be one easy one in each of these rounds, but no, not yet. All right, let's see. Round number four, The Tourist Attraction, The Kiss Quotient, and The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Okay, so this one is actually really easy. I would 100% burn The Tourist Attraction. I did not like that one at all. All. I think I might have settled on a three stars. I'm not sure, but like my feelings about that one are overall pretty negative. So it's probably closer in enjoyment to like a 2.5. There were so many things I had problems with in that novel. So many. So that one is an easy, easy burn. And then an easy reread for me would be The Kiss Quotient. I loved The Kiss Quotient and it was just so well done. I loved the main characters. I loved the messages in the story, the autism representation. And I just loved our main male protagonist and how patient and caring he was with our main female protagonist who is basically trying to learn more about sex and be more comfortable with sex. And so she hires a male escort to teach her. And oh, I just, I just love the whole dynamic and it got so steamy and it was just so sweet when you saw them both kind of fall for each other. Oh, I just loved it. I would definitely not mind revisiting the kiss quotient. And so that would lead me to rewrite the honey don't list, which I'm actually pretty fine with. I don't feel a need to burn that one. The honey don't list is probably one of the only four star Christina Lauren books that I have read. I really enjoyed the honey don't list, although that seems to be an unpopular opinion, but but it just worked for me. So if I had to choose one to rewrite for whatever reason, it would be the honey don't list. All right, next round. The Light We Lost. I think that was by Jill Santipolo, if I remember correctly. Ooh, that's not a good sign. Obviously, I don't even remember who wrote it. The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves and The Good Luck Charm by Helena Hunting. Okay, so now we are in an opposite situation here because I didn't really like any of these books and I would burn all three of them without hesitation. The one that gives me the most negative feelings right off the bat is The Good Luck Charm. I hated that book. This was, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was like a two star read for me. If I remember correctly, it, I think it might've been like a, a second chance thing between a woman and a professional sports athlete. But basically they came together super fast, like within less than half of the story. There was really no buildup to that. They came together and then it was just like pure neediness and the girl not standing up for herself and the guy wanting her to drop everything for him. And oh my God, I just hated this one. So I am okay with burning this one and keeping the other two on the table for a rewrite or a reread. I don't think I can stomach rereading The Girl He Used to know. That book actually made my most disappointing books list of 2022. This too was basically a second chance romance. It follows two people who originally met in college in the early 90s and then something tore them apart and then they reconnect in 2001 and they start to build their relationship again. Uh, this is another one where I had a lot of technical issues with it and I didn't really like our main character. There's just something about her and her personality that really got to me and I felt like their reconnection in the present was way too fast. They just like basically jumped back into it instantaneously and then the author used 9-11 as a plot device in this, which I didn't love. So there's obviously a lot that I could rewrite about this story to have made it a stronger story. So I would rewrite The Girl He Used to Know. And I guess that means I would reread The Light We Lost by Jill Santopolo, although I am not a big rereader and I'm certainly not going to reread a mediocre three-star book, one that I don't remember anything about. But I think because I don't remember anything about it, I could handle rereading it more than the other two, which I have strong negative feelings about. So we'll just go with that one. All right. Wow. That was a challenging one too, because I really just wanted to burn all three of them. All right, next round. Okay, we have Ship by Angie Hawkman, I think. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Okay, so Love on the Brain is the one that I read most recently. And this was a disappointment following the love hypothesis, which I really absolutely loved. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this one because overall it had Allie Hazelwood's signature humor in it. It was still well-written and it had, you know, the STEM aspects that we like. I actually overall liked the main characters, but there were definitely quite a few things in this story that I didn't enjoy reading. So Love on the Brain 100% deserves a rewrite. So Shipped, I remember, was a sweet, fun, possibly hate to love romance if I remember correctly. But what I really remember liking about this was the overall discussion on like wildlife conservation and environmentalism and things like that. I appreciated the part of the story. So this was just a fun, good time that I wouldn't mind revisiting. But well met, I wouldn't mind revisiting because I remember being very distracted while listening to the story. And this is actually a really popular one and it's got several other books in the series. So I think if I was going to reread one, it would be well met so that I could consider continuing in the series. So that means I would probably burn Shipped by Angie Hawkman, but that's not because I didn't enjoy it or it wasn't worth anything. It was, it's just one that I really don't feel the need for any reason to revisit. And so probably wouldn't. 
All right, let's see. We have The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams, Neanderthal Seeks Human by Penny Reed, and House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I did include that here because I do consider that an adult fantasy romance, although there was a like a very complicated plot in there. The romance between Hunt and Bryce is still very foremost within the pages of the story, and I would 100% reread House of Earth and Blood. I probably should actually before I jump into House of Sky and Breath. I just I just loved this and I loved Hunt and I loved Bryce so much and I thought this was just a strong adult fantasy and oh oh my gosh so so good so I would absolutely reread this one. I think I'm gonna burn Neanderthal Seeks Human. Uh this was just a very mediocre romance for me. I don't remember basically anything about it and I tried to read the next book in this series but I couldn't even get through the other one. I DNF'd it. So I don't think I'm gonna continue with Penny Reed as an author and because of that I feel more comfortable burning Neanderthal Seeks Human. So I would rewrite The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams but I don't necessarily have anything pointed that I want to rewrite about it. I did enjoy my reading experience of that overall and I will be continuing that in the future. Okay next I have Rule by Jay Crownover, Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, and my favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren and this is 100% an easy burn. This is my least favorite Christina Lauren of all time. Hated it. Two stars. So much wrong with it. Burn the hell out of this book y'all. And not to give again anything away for the vlog but I would 100% reread Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Fantastic. So I guess that means I would be rewriting Rule but this is another story that I don't have strong feelings about. In fact the only reason I read this is because it was a pick for Chelsea Palmer's book club and overall like I remember being okay with it but nothing like mind-blowing. I didn't continue in the series. I don't want to continue in the series so I don't know maybe I rewrite it to be more memorable. Okay, we have Head Over Heels. I believe the author of this was Hannah Orenstein. Beach Read by Emily Henry. And Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. Okay, so Head Over Heels is another easy burn for me. I didn't really like this story at all. It was very, very mediocre. A lot of issues with it for me. I am very much okay burning this one. I think I would probably choose to reread Beach Read. There was something disconnected for me with regard to Beach Read. I remember loving People We Meet on Vacation. And of course, I loved Book Lovers. But there's something about Beach Read that didn't stick with me. And I don't know why. I don't know if it was because I was distracted while listening to this. So I think that this one could do with a reread to see if I end up liking it better the second time around. Window Shopping was just a cute short holiday romance. It was really quick. I think it was just like barely over 200 pages and I really enjoyed my reading experience of that. So I mean I'm sure that there are a couple of things here and there in that story that I could rewrite but I don't think that it's worth the burning of it. It wouldn't be worth a revisit for me either. Okay, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, Rhythm, Chord, and Malakin by Mariana Zapata, and Becoming Rain by K.A. Tucker, which is the second book in her Burying Water series. Another easy burn, Rhythm, Chord, Malakin. Another one that I absolutely hated. So many issues with that story. I know that everybody loves Mariana Zapata, especially because she's like the queen of slow burn romance, and I love slow burn romance. There is something about her writing that doesn't work for me. Now, could I possibly read some of her more popular ones, like From Lukov with Love? Yeah, but I just... I don't know if I want to. Y'all, Rhythm Chord and Malakin left such a bad taste in my mouth. It was it was not good. So that is a quick burn. Now, in terms of rereading The Unhoneymooners or Becoming Rain, I don't feel the need to reread either of them. Becoming Rain is still pretty fresh in my mind. I don't remember when I read that last, but the details of it are still pretty fresh. I know that I would be able to move on in the series pretty easily because they're fair, they're like companion novels. You don't have to read one before another. So I'd probably rewrite Becoming Rain just because I would be more happy to revisit The Unhoneymooners. This is the other Christina Lauren book that I really, really like. This is the only other one that's gotten four stars for me. This is a hate to love story and it was in Hawaii which was fantastic. So you got all of the summer Hawaiian vibes and I really really enjoyed that one actually. It was a lot of fun so I wouldn't mind revisiting that one. But I must have read a lot of romance guys because we still have a couple more rounds. Keepsake by Serena Bowen which I believe is the third in her True North series. The Highland Fling by Megan Quinn and The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. So I definitely think The Love Hypothesis would be one that I would have to revisit because I loved it so much. It was a fake dating trope that was done to perfection and I'm so sad that Love on the Brain did not live up to that story. I don't really have anything against the Highland Fling or Keepsake. The Highland Fling actually contained an amazingly funny scene. I still laugh when I think about and I think it's worth listening on audio just for this scene. It was hilarious. And Keepsake is probably at this point, is it my least favorite? It might be my least favorite of the four that I read in the True North series. This is probably my least favorite just because I didn't feel like it was as strong or as standout as the other three three. So I'd possibly burn this one. And again, The Highland Fling. This is another one that was just like so fun 
and light. And if you're going into it wanting that, you know, great. But those just really don't stick with me. I don't even remember much of the overall plot. I think it's about two sisters or two friends who like need to get away. And so they apply to take over this cafe for this couple in Scotland who can't run it anymore for medical reasons, I think. And so these sisters or friends, they go over there and they start running the cafe. And then one of them ends up meeting the son of this couple. And, you know, he's a grump. So it's like a grump and sunshine type of romance. And it was, it was fine. You know, it was a great fun reading experience. Like I said, I really laughed so hard at that one scene, but possibly just write it to be a little bit more hard hitting, just a little bit more memorable, a little bit more substantial. I just know that this is not something that has really stuck with me aside from the scene. And I think that if it had met more of that criteria, it probably would have. Okay. It happened one summer by Tessa Bailey, One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Bountiful by Serena Bowen. Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors of all time. I love this one. This was so fantastic. This is a love triangle done right. I would absolutely revisit this one and it is being adapted into a movie. So, I mean, even if I'm just revisiting it in film form, absolutely. Bountiful is actually the fourth book in the True North series. It's the one that I've read the most recently. I think I actually read it in November or December and I really, really liked it. I really enjoyed this one. I don't necessarily feel like there's anything about it that needed to be rewritten. I don't feel like it needs to be burned either. I don't feel either one of these needs to be burned, but I do plan on continuing in this duology, the Bellinger sister duology by Tessa Bailey. I do plan on continuing. So I obviously really enjoyed my reading experience of this, but I don't necessarily think it was anything super special. So I'll go ahead and burn this and I'll go ahead and rewrite Bountiful. Okay, we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan, Twisted Love by Anna Huang, and The Rewind by Alison Winscotch. Okay, so this is hard for me because out of all of these, Archer's Voice is by far the superior novel. So that's one that I would absolutely revisit over these other two. However, I have clear ideas in my head of how I would rewrite Archer's Voice. I actually mentioned it in the wrap up that I did that I included Archer's Voice, how I would specifically rewrite this to make it the perfect romance because there were a lot of issues that I had with it because it was like the two main characters get together so early on in the book that the author had to create a lot of conflict in order to keep the book going, which I didn't appreciate. So I would 100% rewrite Archer's voice to make it the perfect romance. But with, in comparison to these other two, I would revisit this one over these other two. I would 100% burn immediately Twisted Love. Immediately. This was one of my worst books of 2022. It was two stars. I hated it. Will absolutely not be continuing in the story. I, I'm, I don't even want to talk about it. I just want it burned. So that means I would probably rewrite the rewind. And that actually makes sense. So this was actually the last book that I read in 2022. This is kind Kind of a second chance hate to love romance where you're following two characters who were college sweethearts they break up like right before graduation they vow never to see or speak to each other but they're being forced to reunite because a mutual friend of theirs is getting married and they're like that's okay we're just gonna stay away from each other but then the next morning they find themselves in bed together in their old dorm room they have rings on their fingers and they have no idea what happened and so you're trying to follow them piece together what happened the night before to land them where they are and overall it was a decent time it was an okay reading experience another one that really wasn't substantial and i felt like the author did so much telling and not showing about their past relationship. Like I felt no chemistry between these two main characters. I didn't believe that they should be together. The author did a really great job of conveying their hate for one another. I believe that they hated each other. There was nothing there that indicated to me that they should get back together or that they even loved each other in the first place. So I feel like I would have done a better job of going back into the past to follow their past relationship and build that connection and then possibly make it a little bit more difficult for them to actually get back together because I mean this happened over like the course of a day where they're like okay you know what the past decade never happened. We're just gonna, we're just gonna forget it. And we're just gonna get back together. So now that I'm thinking about it, the rewind has a lot that I would rewrite in it as well. So that is one that I would rewrite. It's definitely not one I would revisit. All right, just a couple more rounds. All right, we've got The Simple Wild, Sweet Mercy, also by K.E. Tucker. I don't think I said that The Simple Wild by K.E. Tucker. And It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. All right, well, if you've been around enough, you know that The Simple Wild is like my favorite romance of all time. It's my favorite romance series of all time. I loved the sequel and the novella just as much. So I would 100% revisit The Simple Wild and these characters. They just have my whole heart. They feel like home to me. I hope that if I were to reread it, I would feel the same. But just the memories alone of my reading experience with that, I just, I just love them so much. I would burn Sweet Mercy because out of these three, Sweet Mercy is not nearly as strong as these other two. And it's probably the least favorite K.A. Tucker that I've read so far. This is a mob romance and they're very, very short books. So like this wasn't really substantial at all. It was like hmm, a lot of just smut and kind of implausible situations. So I'm okay burning that one. I will likely continue with the series just because it is K.A. Tucker. She's one of my favorites and it is short, but you know. And then It Ends With Us, I would rewrite. So I know that It Ends With Us is a fan favorite of Colleen Hoover's, but it wasn't the strongest one for me. I've read a bunch of other Colleen Hoover that was a lot stronger for me. I did 
didn't necessarily connect with it like I wanted to overall. I definitely wanted more of Atlas. If you're not familiar, It Ends With Us it is basically a story about domestic abuse. It follows a woman and a relationship with her husband who kind of ends up becoming abusive despite his that he doesn't want to, but it's like he can't control himself and his temper and his rage. And so it's about her and her fighting her way out of that. And then Atlas was a boy that she knew when she was younger. She helped him when he was homeless and they reconnected in adulthood and things like that. And I just like wanted more of that relationship in there. So I think if it had been in there more, I would have felt like more emotionally connected to the story. But overall, this just wasn't my favorite of Colleen Hoover's. All right, y'all, we are we are here. We're at the final three. Wild at Heart by K.E. Tucker, which is the second book in the Simple Wild series. One Day in December by Josie Silver. And Burying Water, which is the first book in that K.E. Tucker series I mentioned earlier, the Burying Water series. All right, so y'all know I'm going to revisit Wild at Heart. I just love that one still so much. That is kind of like what happens after the honeymoon phase from the Simple Wild is over. I loved diving further into Cala Jonah's relationship and seeing them navigate the hurdles because Kala has to move to Alaska and what that means for her and some of the insecurities that she's facing and the concerns that she has because Jonah is a bush pilot which can be a very dangerous profession and how she's dealing with that especially knowing what happened with her mom like her mom was in a similar situation in the past she had moved to Alaska to be with Kala's father it didn't work out she ended up taking Kala and moving to Toronto and so there's a lot to unpack in that story and I just loved it so much in terms of whether I would rewrite or burn one day in December or burying water this is another one that's difficult for me because I don't think either one of them deserves to be burned. I enjoyed both of them immensely. I would say I would I would not mind revisiting One Day in December. Um, I would have to say that out of all of them, the one that I would possibly burn is Burying Water, even though I really did enjoy that one. I think it left less of an impression on me than One Day in December did. Even though I know a lot of people have problems with One Day in December because it kind of features emotional cheating in some aspects, but I really actually did appreciate that story a lot. So I would rewrite it. I think that would be the one that I would rewrite. I'm not sure exactly how I would do that, but I would probably rewrite that one because I definitely don't want to burn that one. That was a solid, solid reading experience for me and I really enjoyed it. All right, y'all, that is it. That actually took me a lot longer than I thought. I didn't realize that I had so many romance or like contemporary stories in here that heavily featured romance. And I don't even know if that was all of them. Like I probably unintentionally overlooked some. And, and like I said, I didn't include YA in here at all. Yeah, this could have been a lot longer. I mean, it's already been pretty, pretty long, but that was a lot of fun. Please let me know if you agree with some of the things that I came up with here. Like, let me know if there was three and you would have changed whether you reread rewrote or burned it. I would love to know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos two times a week, three times if I have my shit together and I actually have another video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.